Happy New Year, everybody. So I'm recording this video in December, but is going to go up on New Year's. And that is what this video is going to be about, is going to be about what are my goals and plans for 2024? I don't really do New Year's resolutions because I don't find them to be helpful for me personally. If I want to challenge myself, I just do that during the year. However, I do set goals for every year and, and implicitly in those goals will be what my plans are for that year. So I'm sure that some of you would love to know kind of what I plan to do as I'm living in a car based upon what has already happened in the last six months of my living in a car. And by the way, there's also going to be a video in a few days, which will be about the first mix six months of living in a car and what I've learned and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. Let's go ahead and get into my 2024 goals and implicitly the plans for the year. So the first thing is about money. And I have recorded a number of videos about money and debt and all that kind of stuff. So you can check that out if you're interested to get into the details of, you know, how we got here and what have you. The first part of the money goal is about saving money. So about my emergency fund savings and my savings for my down payment on my next vehicle. Because right now I'm living in a Honda Civic. I want to actually get a Subaru Outback. I want something just a little bit bigger, a bigger inside so I can cook inside and something that has a roof rack and has a trailer hitch and all those kind of things, you know, and also has a bit more high clearance. Well, this does not have high clearance at all. <laughs> something that has some high clearance and all wheel drive. So that just means I can go to a lot of places you can't go in a Honda Civic. So I'm saving five grand emergency fund and five grand for a down payment on a car. The down payment of the car, I'm almost done. I have over $4,000, I think. The emergency savings, I'm like, a third of the way. So great progress on that. That is, those two goals are before I pay off debt more. The idea is to get those emergency funds comp both at 5k and then all my extra money will go to paying off debt. And considering that, you know, the money to pay off debt is primarily coming from my YouTube channel. So this channel just makes a little bit of money. I would call it gas money. So it's like, you know, less than $200 a month right now. My other channel though makes around two grand a month in, and I mean in, in just YouTube revenue. So in advertising stuff, revenue, it also has a Patreon and all that, but that I'm putting that in a separate category. It literally is in a separate category. So my YouTube business, my goal, my hope is for it to be distributing two grand a month to me. And that money goes to pay off debt. Well, first it's going to go to emergency fund and stuff, but then once that's maxed out, then it will go to pay off debt. So I'll be able in that scenario to pay off a big chunk of debt this year. And that's two grand more than my minimum payments. You know what I'm saying? So I'll make more than $24,000 of progress for paying off debt because I'll also be making all the payments on all the other loans. And then by the way, if you haven't watched the video that I talk about my debt, I don't have any credit cards. These are all fixed rate loans. I will be living off of the money my law firm makes. And so my law firm, where I do legal work for people uh, with doing trademarks mostly, and then I also have a Patreon, and I also do some calls that people pay me for, like consultations, that pays me a salary. And so I will live off of that money, which should work perfectly fine. The second part is about travel, which is probably the one that people are the most interested in. So like I've been doing the last few months, I actually spend like a lot of time in town, which is surprising to me. And I'm going to talk more about that in my six months in a car video, but, but I still want to make sure that I am traveling as much as I want to and as much as I need to. So I'm making sure that every day I take a day off that I, you know, typically will go hiking or for go for a drive, go to the ocean or something like that, which would also be hiking, but that I do some kind of hiking thing every week that every month I go camping. So if I'm not going on a big trip that month, I still go at least for a few nights, go to a campground, partly just to be outside, to be relaxed, partly so I don't have to drive a car for a few days, partly so I can just cook on my own food. I mean, it's just like a, I enjoy camping, you know? And one of the reasons I live in a car is so I can camp more because I love it. So going to, going camping a few days every month. So at least two nights, if not more. And then every quarter go on a big trip. How long the big trip will be and where I'm going to go, I have a ton of ideas, but it also depends on, you know, my health, what's going on with my significant other and my son, the weather, are there forest fires, <laughs> you know, like I kind of have to play that by ear to a certain extent, but I do have some specific plans. One is to go see the Eclipse in April. My thought is I'm going to go to the Midwest for that. I 
but you know, it all depends on weather. <laughs> I don't know. Should find trying to go somewhere with the eclipse is a, is a whole thing. A lot of people are going to be going to like West Texas and other people going to Mexico. I don't want to go where all the other people are going, right? You know me. I don't want to be around the crowd. So I'm thinking of trying to trying to go to the Midwest. Also, my parents live there. I'm going to see what they're doing. I actually haven't even talked to them about this yet, but maybe I'll see if they're in town for that. It's not, the eclipse isn't going to go over their house, but it's going to be like 20 minutes from their house. So I'm going to see what they're doing. But the idea is that that will be a trip where I will be in that part of the world. So Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, like that chunk of the world. And I haven't road tripped around there in a really, really long time. And there are some national parks there. And of course, just beautiful state parks and beautiful places. A lot of times you see people who live in their vehicles, who are van lifers and stuff, spending their time in the western part of the United States. But there's actually great, amazing, beautiful places in the Midwest and also camp Campgrounds there are are inexpensive considering the resources they have. So, like a state park campground in Arkansas, Missouri, or I think a bunch of other states, uh, Nebraska, it'll be twenty three dollars a night. In that includes water and electricity at your campsite. Amazing, amazing. You know what a wonderful resource, and that means that you can camp there in a lot of seasons that you might not be able to otherwise because you have electricity. Now, it's probably not super fancy, gazillion amp, whatever, but I mean, I'm in a car, you know, I just want to plug into something. <laughs> I could charge my stuff up. I could run a heater. Another thing I'm doing is going to Arizona. This is actually a trip that I'm on right now when you're watching this video, which is why I recorded this a week and a half before you're watching it. And spend some time in Arizona, go to some national parks there, all that kind of stuff. That, of course, is also very weather dependent. I want to go somewhere where it's, where it's snowing, where there is snow. I want to figure out camping, living in a car, sleeping in a car at lower temperatures. So I'm good down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to figure out the range of 15 degrees Fahrenheit to 30 degrees, like that range. If I can figure out camping in that range, then that opens up a lot to me to be able to go to a lot of different places. So that's the the range I want to figure out. There's a whole lot of places that get that cold at night. And then if I can figure that out, I can go to those cool places and there's not going to be very many people there, etc. Obviously, I'm at a Honda Civic, so I have to think about that from the perspective of driving in the snow. There's a lot of places that driving in the snow isn't going to work. I do have cables, you know, but so, I mean, I can drive. It's, it's not about places that require you to have chains or cables. It is about the fact that I don't have high clearance and there's, if I get stuck somewhere, like I'm actually stuck there. So <laughs> I want to figure that out though. As far as other places, it really depends upon, as I said, weather, forest fires, what's going on. But I do want to do some other big trips, hit some more national parks that I haven't been to. I'll probably also go to some places that I've been to before. But I'm thinking, besides the trip to the Midwest, I'm thinking I'm going to do other things in the western part of the United States. So I'll go to a state, maybe even something as straightforward from California as go to Nevada or Oregon, or Idaho or Washington state, you know, and then just explore that state and spend a month there or something like that. But we'll see. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. So the big things there are the eclipse, snow, figuring out camping in the cold, and then we're going to go from there. One of the things also is this next summer and summer of 2024, I do not want to be here, here where it's like in places where it's a hundred degrees and I am just dying of the heat. I did that last time because I wasn't ready to travel yet. But yeah, like I'm planning to go up to elevation. I'm planning to avoid, like it is fine if it gets to be in the nineties during the day, as long as it cools off at night, which a lot of times it does in the mountains. But here there'll be times where I was going to bed. It was still in, you know, 85 degrees. And it's like, this is not okay. So I definitely don't want to be dealing with that. But those are kind of my ideas for travel. But when it really comes down to it, there's a lot of travel that I've realized doesn't make sense to do in the Honda Civic. And so my goal for over a year from now is to buy the Subaru Outback so I can do all the trips that don't make sense to do in the Honda Civic, partially because of the clearance, but also because there's just not enough space. So like right now you can see that it's raining. I've realized that cooking inside the car is just so tedious. I don't do it. Like, I can, but I don't. 
and this is something I talked to you about on the six month in a car video too, but like I need a little bit bigger of a vehicle to have a kind of permanent kitchen set up inside so I don't have to get everything out and put everything away each time. I hate doing that. It does not work. So and it's not something I can do every day. I don't have the patience for that to do every single day. So that's kind of the, the idea is a lot of the travel that I plan to do is going to be after I pay off more debt and after I have the next vehicle. All right. So the third category is learning stuff. So I plan to get my commercial drone license. I have access to a drone. My significant other has three drones, four drones. They're really into drones and photography. They have many, many cameras. They have so much of that kind of stuff. They're super, super into it. So I can borrow their kind of least fancy drone, which is actually still very fancy in my opinion, and film stuff for the channel. However, if I'm going to film stuff for the channel, the channel's monetized as well as the channels generally on YouTube, you need a commercial drone license. So I actually have done some of the studying for it, but I didn't actually schedule a time to take it. And, and it's so long since I watched all the videos. I don't remember a lot of the stuff. So I need to restudy for that and then take that test so I can get my commercial drone license and then use a drone and sh to add stuff. Cause I think it'll add some great things when I go to disperse camping and, and go to various nature places. The second part in there is I have just started learning Spanish and I'm continuing to learn Japanese. I had been learning French and French is what I took in high school, but I got to a point in French, got to be, you know, low intermediate where I'm just like, I don't want to spend more time on French until I'm ready to go somewhere where they speak French. So like one of my long-term goals, this is not something the next year, is to go to Quebec and spend months there living in a vehicle, traveling around, speaking French. Now then it needs to be the Quebec version of French. So once I get close to actually making the plans for that trip, I will hire a tutor who's a Quebec French tutor so I can get the very good conversational aspect of Quebecese versus Parisian French. Because I every time I've taken classes and things, it's always been Parisian French and I'm not, I don't have plans to go to France. I don't have plans to go to Paris. Uh, the idea is to go to Quebec. So that's a kind of a long-term um, language goal. And I have a lot of other languages I would like to learn too. But I'm, my idea here is to, Spanish is very, very useful even in the United States, right? There are more Spanish-speaking people here than I think other countries just because we have so many people here in the United States who speak Spanish. So yeah, that's my idea. And then Japanese, I'm learning on a very, very, very long path because it's very, very hard to learn and I am have my own kind of strategies for learning it. So I can go to Japan and rent one of their teeny little campers and travel around rural Japan and because you need for Japanese there. People in rural Japan don't necessarily speak English, especially older people are not going to be speaking English. So, and also if you're going to a country and you speak the language, even if it's just conversational, a basic level, you know, you're going to have a better time and and it's you're going to be able to interact with people so much better than if you don't so that's kind of my philosophy of that and then I'm also still taking classes at community college in things like anthropology geography health and advocacy things so next semester specifically I'm taking oceanography and on what else oh I'm taking a drawing class so this is because like I think I probably told you all this story when I was in Yellowstone. I came upon this woman. I was on this trail, this nature trail, and there was not really anybody else there. And she was drawing a boulder. She had this notebook. It was like about this big. She was drawing this boulder and she started talking to me about how she, you know, don't, don't mind me. I'm just drawing this boulder. And what she does is every year she comes back to Yellowstone and draws the same things. The bowl, this boulder, this these set of trees over here, this waterfall in this part, you know, like, and every year she goes the same things. And it was just so beautiful. And what a wonderful way to experience Yellowstone in such a, a kind of quiet way where you're really spending time. Cause it's not like a picture you take, boop, done. But this is when you're drawing something, you really have to spend time there and kind of emotionally connect with it. It just seems so beautiful to me. And I've tried to learn to draw many times with the various different books of, you know, learn to draw in 30 days kind of stuff. I think taking a class would actually make it. So I did it and would develop that skill. And then I could do have an, a, you know, notebook where I do nature drawings as I travel. And I think that would be a lovely way to connect with what I'm doing. 
so yeah, so oceanography, which I'm very interested in. I love maps and stuff like that. And I feel like I do not, like looking over at the table of contents of the book and all that stuff for the oceanography class, there's so much I do not know I have never learned. And it's, you know, majority of the Earth's surface is oceans. So oceanography, drawing, and I'm taking a class of in the anthropology department, which is indigenous peoples of North America. I'm very much looking forward to this class. I think that's a huge hole in my education and I'm traveling all over North America. So I think it would be good to know about the people who actually lived there and to some extent still live there, the ones who weren't, you know, subject to genocide. But that will be very, and also approaching it from an anthropological perspective. So the idea is you're approaching it from the perspective of before colonization, what were these people like and how did they live and how were they all different from each other, et cetera. And then I'm taking something else. Oh, and then I'm also taking a food safety class. Okay. This is just a two credit class. This is a class for the culinary department. And, but I mean, it's open to anybody. This is so I could actually learn the rules of food safety because I live in kind of a weird way and I have a cooler and I also sometimes don't even use a cooler. And I want to know what rules am I actually breaking? The class is taught by someone who is a biologist. She is a microbiologist. So it's taught from a very scientific perspective of here's all the things that could kill you. <laughs> here's how to slow them down so they don't kill you. And so if I'm going to be talking about how to store food and how, and not, and it's not that I teach about this stuff, but I do talk about how I store food and how I cook food and how I do the dishes and all these things. I want to know what rules am I breaking so I can tell you, here's the rules that I'm breaking. Here are the risks that I'm taking. You can decide for yourself if you want to take those risks and break those rules. And in some cases you definitely don't, etc. So, and you know, and also which risks are the really bad ones, which things really actually do need to be stored in great, perfect temperatures and which things it's like, yeah, the dangers there aren't that high, especially if you cook the food all the way, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm hoping to get out of that class. It actually looks very well put together. Uh, they, the class is already loaded into the online learning platform and she, the teacher looks the professor looks so super, super organized and has designed the class specifically for online learning. So I think that will be interesting. But yeah, so really my 2024 things, like many other things, is about money goals, travel goals, and learning goals. So if you want to just say hi, leave a comment below. We'll say happy new year. Leave a comment be below. And also if you want to share anything about your 2024 goals, your travel plans, whatever, feel free to share those below too. Like, subscribe, all the things. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.